Today we're going to be using one of the three methods that I know of to weld a gun barrel. Now you can find all three of these methods in The Art of Blacksmithing by Alex Beeler. He tells you about all three of these as well as a bunch of other detailed information on how to construct a muzzle-loading rifle. Another good source is also Foxfire Volume 5. I highly recommend you get the whole Foxfire series, but Volume 5 covers blacksmithing and gunsmithing. I said there's three methods that I know of. The first is the spiral wrap method where you take a square rectangle bar, wrap it around a mandrel, and then you weld the resulting tube. Second is the scalp method where you take a flat bar, you wrap it into a C shape and you weld it. And the third is I'm calling it the Whitley method because Alex Beeler in his book says that a gunsmith by the name of Whitley made his barrels this way. And you take two, two bars of iron and you fuller a quarter inch groove down the center. As you can see, I've already chiseled out the center line on this bar. So you fuller out a quarter inch groove and you put the two bars together and you weld the two seams on either end. And that will give you your bore or your hole that you will ream out, drill and ream out. Now I only have the one short bar here for a test piece. So we're going to fold this whole piece, cut it in half, fold and weld it. So you have a chain weight to hold this while I fuller it. from both sides too so I don't walk the hole off to one side. I'm going to take a quarter inch rod and check this. We're not quite to half depth yet. There you go, you can see the groove we've got established. And I think since we're going to be forge welding it and compressing it, I'm going to take this down to where the quarter inch rod will sit three quarters of its width down. Make sure you keep your anvil clean. This stuff really likes to blow scale everywhere. See, we have our groove all the way down, and it should be ready to cut and fold. Now, you'll see it's a little bit wavy. It's not a big deal. All we need is a hole going down the rough center of this tube for these drill bits to follow and ream out. Okay, I measured the length and I marked, marked it already with the chisel. And I'm gonna use the chisel to make a nice deep line in this. So that way 
does not walk on the edge of my hearty. Actually, my chisel's nice and thin. I think I'll just cut most of the way through with it. Okay, we're a little cold for chiseling now. So I'm going to take my butcher block brush. Clip these pieces a little bit. There we go. So I don't know if you can tell, cutting it through like that made a bulge in there. I'm using a uh, a punch to uh, make a hole there. There we go. You see, we've got a hole there, so that way when we fold it, we will know where to put our bore. Watch so say where to put our drill to make the bore. Give it a preliminary coat of borax. Just real light. Back in the fire for folding. Now, on this one, I'm these three methods, all three methods I'm testing is exactly that tests. I'm seeing which one is easiest to forge for me. And I'm going to be destructively testing these to see which one is the strongest arrangement. Okay, so there is our cut and folded gun tube. Right now it's uh, four inches or 100 millimeters. New flux back here. Back to the fire. This is mild steel. Don't be afraid to let it sparkle. Okay. These sides back here. A brush and new flux. And going back in for welding heat number three on the end. Oh, I forgot to tell you what the plan was. So the plan is to forge weld down this way two times. Now the third one. Every heat from now on is going to be a forge welding heat. And we're going to weld the, the flats and then weld our octagons in. Well, we've got our flats welded on that end. Before we get too far, we're going to weld the other end. Get rid of the old flux. Put on the new flux. Now I'm just using regular borax on this this one. But uh, if I do decide, whatever method I decide on, I'm going to be using Iron Mountain Flux because that stuff is good. Okay, 
make sure you keep your fire tended. Right now I'm using a mixture of coke and anthracite. It's about 70-30 anthracite to coke. And the only reason for that is, is uh, for when I first get it started, the coke lights really easy. It gets the hard to light anthracite to go a lot faster than normal. I found while you're using it, when you put new fresh stuff on top of the pile, the same thing happens. That coke gets really hot really fast, gets that anthracite really hot really fast. Then we've got sparks. We're going to let that soak. Back off the air just a little bit. You'll notice I'm only hitting around the edges. We don't need to be collapsing that forward hole that we made. Okay, so there we go. We got our tube welded. You still see the seam there. Now we are going to octagon it at, at the forge welding heats. Make sure we have a really good forward weld on this thing. Okay, so hopefully you can see we have our octagon established. Now we're just gonna, and but you can still see that seam there. So we're going to progressively work every flat make them even and try and get as rid as much of that seam as we can ultimately we're going to be filing this barrel and getting rid of all the surface imperfections but for all intents and purposes we have a welded barrel and this should have cooled down enough to where hopefully you can see, there we go, we have a hole down the center of our barrel. Looks like that worked in all the flats. I'm going to keep doing that, and I'll show you the final product when I'm done. So here it is. I've got the flats mostly equal. Got it as straight as I can get it. And... We still got our hole. Now, next we're going to, I think we'll do the scalp method next, and then the spiral method. Then we are going to use these to practice boring and making a nice smooth bore and getting it to 0 0.440 of an inch, which is what we want or what I want for my 45 caliber bore. And then we will practice making our breech plugs and proof testing these destructively. I'm going to the plan is to basically fill these things up three quarters of the way with powder and balls all the way to the end. Try to get these things to, to explode to see just how much pressure they can take. 
And if they survive, friggin' sweet. We've got three pistol barrels. Okay, so I misspoke a little bit in the video. I want a 45 caliber bore because I already own a 45 caliber, so I have all the equipment and ammunition for it. And I said 0.440 is what I want. I use a 0.440 ball. So I want to bore my bore to be 0 0.450 or 0.455, depending on if I, I'm undecided on whether I want to use 10,000 patches or 15,000 patches. And the proof testing, the actual proof test is going to be a double charge of powder with double the amount of weight on top. So a double charge of powder and two balls. Then after that, I'm going to do a double charge of powder and one ball, and then a charge of powder and two balls, and then a charge and one ball, and that is to peak stress the barrel, almost peak stress the barrel, stress the barrel, and then stress the barrel with a normal firing to see if repeated high stresses can get those forge welds to burst. And if it passes that proof test, then I think that's my the, my personal standard proof test. Um, after that, I think I will do the, the Wallace Gussler method four times the normal amount of powder in one ball. And after that, we are going to destructively test them, fill up that bore with powder, ram down some balls and try to get them to explode and see and tell us just how good our forge welds are or aren't.